If you want a turnkey solution, that is not the range you're going to be in. Not in the Bagley area. Okay. Um, just my opinion. You can take it for what it's worth. It's probably not even worth the two cents that's printed on it. So, <laughs> but I'll, I'll let Dean ask, answer that for you. Yeah, so um, just for perspective's sake, we just listed a, um, a property on Woodingham in Bagley, okay? Yep. 15, 1600 square foot, something like that, basement, garage, you know, it's a really nice house. It's got yep. the nice sandstone accents. That's 100 updating. You know, it's clean, but, you know, it still needs some. Um, you know, other other areas you may want to look at, and I'm not going to go name off neighborhoods, but yep. I can tell you this. If you go to the uh, Fair Housing, um, it's, it's uh, HUDuser.gov. You want to type that in, Randy? HUDuser.gov sure. slash Fair Market Rents. Now, you might have to Google that, uh, that term. So, Fair Market Rents. Uh, on the back of puduser.gov and if you put in your uh, local community or your county rather and that's going to tell you uh, after, after you know a couple of clubs, it's going to show you what the fair market rents are for three bedroom you know one actually starting at studios all the way up to four bedroom houses okay gotcha you can tell you what the fair market rent is for that county so wayne county it's it, it was insane it like for from the 2022 to 2023 numbers it boosted up 150 dollars a month roughly i think it was 154 on a three-bedroom house now uh it was the, uh, the girl's name was tracy ah uh, yes tracy all right so tracy here's what i'd say to you you have the opportunity to find turnkey houses in that range right even mm -hmm. if you're on a little bit higher end you know the sixty thousand dollar range the question is now this if you're paying cash and i'm assuming that you're renting right uh, what's that yeah yeah uh she's probably either renting them out or doing a flip so yeah well i mean if you're if you're flipping i mean geez you know good luck because it's going to be yeah. a, it, like if that's limit if your budget is limited to 40 to 60. yeah you know, you're I, I would not recommend if you're going to get in that those areas in Detroit. I'd recommend doing buy and holds. Um, I don't recommend at this moment with the market, with it being so unpredictable in Detroit. I don't recommend flips in Detroit. Now, it's different if you get a smoking deal in East English Village and things like that. Um, but ah, yes, yeah, she said she wants to rent and hold them. So, sure. um, and some renovation. So she said also perhaps Grandmont at, or Rosedale might be better. Um, if you can find a good deal out there, that'd be great. Now, mm -hmm. I just, like I said, I, you know, you're probably going on, on market where there's a ton of interest. Look, I recommend you, you know, like, yes, I'm a wholesaler and I want you to buy from me, but I don't always have the correct inventory. So look at multiple wholesalers that are out there and just make sure you are asking the wholesaler the right questions. That's all. Okay. Those right questions are, okay, what do I have to pay out of pocket? Do I have to pay all the closing costs? Great. Yes. As long as you know, does the seller understand, you know, the, the back taxes and water bill, blight tickets, all of that, that's coming out of the seller's end, correct? That's in your contract. Most wholesalers, yes, that is correct. We are going from a title company, correct? Yes, you're going from a title company, okay? If anybody comes to you with a, wants to do a quick claim deed, run. Always get title insurance. So, yep. That, that holds you accountable and that holds the seller accountable, okay? And it doesn't matter to the seller because guess what? You're paying the title insurance. You're paying the closing costs. So, um, 
that that's what helps with that aspect um so i always recommend you do that um usually 99.9 percent .9 of wholesale deals you are paying the closing costs so anybody who says that oh i didn't know that, that that's going to happen you're doing a regular wholesale deal right yes okay most wholesale wholesale deals the buyer pays closing costs for the seller and the buyer is that right dean you know what i actually negotiated a completely different way because all my contracts are written you know for uh in my favor yep okay um you know tax prorations and uh, also yep. the um you know what the topic that you're talking about right here i mean this is like yeah no you pay your uh, how can i pay your taxes right that's what like, like so the title work we have transfer taxes and yep. and also what you should probably understand is that like there's some habits that people get from a negotiation standpoint where some folks are like well you, you know so and so is going to pay my closing cost like you know the the people that are calling the cash buyer numbers like call our website mm -hmm. are like pre-programmed yep. it's nowhere on our website that we're going to pay you i don't believe it is um that we're going to pay your closing costs now mm -hmm. we can we can't do that but it all boils down to how we negotiate this deal so right. well, you tell me mr seller like we're going to role play that real quick mr you know randy what's most important to you somebody takes care of your closing costs or putting the most amount of money in your pocket gotcha you know, that's a trick question yeah put the most amount of money in your pocket all right so yep. uh, and then the question becomes how can i pay for taxes you pay your take your, your 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 taxes i don't know what your situation is with your cpa you go into the cpa you like whatever write-offs you might have okay so then again i'm going to go ahead and ask you is it fair for me to pay your taxes right i had one so, wholesale i had one wholesale deal come through and i didn't mean to interrupt you here sorry about that no, you're good. um that came through and said um you know it was written inside there that uh buyer pays back taxes i'm like what wholesaler negotiated that you know most Do of the time know what the back taxes are <laughs> they have a rough idea they didn't and they didn't post okay. it in there at all so it was it, it was never posted so not only is you have the price but you have to pay the back taxes on that and he didn't even provide that information so yeah. you know my this is my spiel and anybody wants to take it and use it i have no problem with that my spiel to the sellers is hey mr seller you know we as a company you know we pride ourselves in order to make things go smoother we do provide we do pay the closing costs for the for you as well as us basically what that entails is is we cover anything from the title company that the title company charges okay what you, the the number that i give you okay is going to be the number to you there's only three things that's going to be coming out of your that number and i and i tell them three things i say one your back taxes and insurance right or your back taxes and, I, and all the way up to the closing date we don't know when's the closing as well as i'm you know you still own, own the property they understand that no problem the second thing is blight tickets uh oh what's blight tickets oh you know those, those those tickets you get for too long of a grass that the city likes to give out you know those type of tickets oh yeah i don't got none of those then you don't have to worry and then the third thing is your water bill Oh yeah, I know. I got. I got. I, I know. I got to take care of that. Great, awesome. Those are the only three things that would ever come out of your end. Everything else, that number I give you, whatever number I give you, is going to be net to you. Now, there you go. right there, I'm upfront. I'm honest with everything that's going to come out of their end. Okay, and it says all that in my contract. Okay, and I tell them. Everything that I, we discussed is going to be in this contract and we can walk it line by line for you if you need be. 
but I can just go it over over with you, you know, no problem. I'll send it over to you. Let's do about ten minutes, and I'll do we'll do a document sign. Does that work for you? Great. So you're closing deals over the phone. Sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. So it all depends on the situation. If it's a if it's a um, out of state seller or out of state, uh, yeah, out of state seller, mm -hmm. uh, then we have to do it over the phone, you know. Uh, but I'll still go look at the property first, get access to it, and so on and so forth. Okay. So yeah, <clears throat> makes sense. Yep. What other questions uh, do you want to address? So the thing is, is that um, what would you? For somebody just getting into we'll go we'll go two different routes okay i'll say we'll, we'll start off with it as an investor someone wanting to do an investment for a buy and hold do renovations do a buy and hold i'm not going to get into flipping right now just do hey i want to buy a property i want to put some money into it to appreciate and i want to rent it out okay um where do you think they should start off if they're going to start off in the metro detroit area okay and what how do you think they should get started in order to do that then we'll get into then i want to go as a wholesaler kind of the same questions where should they get started what should they do obviously me as a wholesaler as well as you as a wholesaler we know a little bit different but i just kind of want to get your opinion and, and let everybody know your opinion on that yeah so i'm the type of guy over here that uh the attention span can be a little short so i'm writing down these questions <laughs> yep and i might need you to help lead me through the no problem to lead me through so first question is buy and hold investors where do yep. you start um, so here's some general guidelines, right? I'm not going to name neighborhoods. No, I'm not doing it. Um, in fact, I'm not even going to name cities. Mm. Okay. What, what you should probably do is have a look at how much money you have to spend. All right. Mm -hmm. Whether it's cash or if it's down payment. Okay. You can look into some things like DSCR loans. Yes. Okay. You, you've heard of these. Have you talked about them on the channel? Yes, we have. Okay, uh, got it. Yep. So basically, if a property qualifies and it has like for a certain amount of rent, so say for instance, a thousand dollars a month rent, uh, it's my understanding that uh, the well, in some cases, the rent can be just your, the property taxes, insurance, the, the pity payment, yep. the property P -I -T -I. Tax, insurance, yep. you know, so. Um, that can be up to a thousand dollars in some cases. So there's that. Talk with the lender that does DSCR loans. Get a good, wholesome explanation on that. Uh, secondly, uh, you're going to start looking at. Uh, you'll look at the interest rates and those. They're high. Yep. Right. You're going to see that. But the bottom line is that the numbers have got to work with that. Whatever calculations you use, use a management company. Know how much they're going to charge you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and then build in all your costs through a spreadsheet. I think you can you can find spreadsheets, um, you know, somewhere online. Some of these different websites, you know, these podcasts, and somebody, you know, has a spreadsheet out there for you. You can find one. Um, but the thing is, is that uh, you got to figure out what your overhead is. You got to figure out what your return needs to be. All right. So that's something you need to do. You also need to have a, a serious look at if you're not paying cash. How much money do you need for a down payment, which is typically to 20 to 25% down. And then here's the real kicker. I don't know of many uh, organizations out there, lending institutions that are lending less than $75,000 right now. Some of them are even a hundred. So that means that if your $100,000 purchase price, 25% down, $75,000 mortgage. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you need to talk with the lender. Get somebody on your team, somebody that you can trust that you can just run the numbers through. You can look at uh, other, you know, like Kiabi. Kiabi, that used to be Lending Home. 
I'm not doing any uh, deal with these guys, but they're, yeah. I mean, you know, anytime you're going through a mortgage process, it's tough. Well, what if you can work out seller finance? Mm -hmm. Work out some sub two deals. Go find, like, did you know that you can find people that have certain interest rates and you can target them specifically in your marketing? Yeah, sub two, you yeah. know, subject to the existing mortgage. Yeah, you know? we've, we've done them. Yeah.